I'd like to thank Annalise. I'd like to thank Eileen. <clears throat> I've been told that my writing tends to be cold, analytical, matter of fact, and they kind of dragged me into doing something else. And I'd also like to thank my fellow Pentail scholars for sharing and allowing me to see other things that I had not seen. And to all of you, I'd like to quote my father, he used to quote the great Duke Ellington. I love you, Natalie. The end. <laughs> this isn't really accurate. It says DNA. I'm not going to be reading about DNA. <laughs> I'm, the title of this is Granddad, which I guess is kind of like DNA. <laughs> you want to play games with it. My father's father was the only grandparent that I ever met. All the others died before I was born. He had a small piece of land outside of Amityville. And being from the hill country of Georgia, he had a garden with vegetables and a chicken coop. As a city kid, I was used to apartments and pavement. So when Dad took me on visits, it was an adventure. A house with a basement. <laughs> a wooded forest surrounding the house on three sides. Scary place. Probably had lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, don't want to go there. Real live chickens. Talk about an alternate universe. <laughs> Trips with granddaddy into the coop to get fresh eggs used to terrify me. All of the chickens would start making a racket as we walked through to where the eggs were. And I won't even go into the stench. Give me the odor of dog poop on a hot, humid summer day anytime. <laughs> when we'd walk through, the birds would flap their wings and come up off the ground just high enough so that I was scared that their claws would scratch my face. On one visit, Dad said that we were staying for dinner. I was okay with that because it gave me more quality adventure time. <laughs> on the menu was chicken. I was really okay with that. I love chicken. But I had yet to connect the dots. After all, we all know that chicken comes cut up and in packages. <laughs> Granddaddy and I went into the chicken coop and he grabbed a bird. We went outside the coop. He took the bird by the neck with one of his big hands and began swinging it around and around and around. <laughs> Then he broke the bird's neck and ripped its head off, throwing it into the woods. I was flabbergasted, jaw-dropping stunned. That night, I had a crisis of faith, looking down at the cooked bird on my plate. I had been terrified of it just before it had been picked, and with it at its demise. There had been no last minute stay of execution from the governor. <laughs> there it was, plucked and cooked. But I got over it and chowed down. Hey, it was chicken. 